und zurück bei Fast Forward mit dem wundervollen Robin Hitchcock. And now that the soft boys are coming yeah. back, um, mm. do you feel a bit bitter about people? Because now everybody's sort of going, way, the soft boys are back and freaking out. And, and sort of back then you sort of sometimes had to really struggle. No, I'm really glad that, that people are, are getting it this time around, you know. Yeah. And I don't suppose they're getting it in their millions, but that's not really the point. The idea is that what we did was good enough to last, and 21 years later we can come creaking out and perform the same songs. We're certainly playing bigger places than we did in our lifetime, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, I just saw the British itinerary, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's nice it's sort of vindicated us. Yeah. There's not really much point being bitter. Yeah. You know, nobody likes angry people. But angry people just get angrier and they drive everybody away. That's true. I'm just glad we're all alive and still able to play together. Yeah. And, and I hope I hope everybody enjoys it, including us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and there are lots of bands that um, say you had a great influence of them, that's why they started making music or things like, like Flaming Lips or um, Pavement oh, and bands wow. like that. Uh, ah. Can you relate to their music or find similar ideas? Well, I think they all stand on their hind legs and play the guitar. <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> I'm not sure whether we listen to, inf whether we actually influence people or whether we just, they all listen to the same people that we did. I think yeah. the, the Soft Boys was a kind of corridor between the 60s and the 80s. Yeah. And in kind of rock journalist terms, we're probably the missing link between the birds and REM, if you like, in, in terms of that sound. Yes. People like the lips have got a more keyboard-driven sound. Yeah. Pavement would be more, I could see that, the guitars and things. Yeah. But a lot of American musicians did listen to Underwater Moonlight when they were growing up. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but it, it just appeared on their plate, you know. Yes. It's like what they were given. Yes, sort of what they <laughs> so, heard, yeah, their and, friends, and, and you know, that's how it's Yeah, and, and I don't know who was responsible for that, but yeah. uh, it obviously, it's, it's, you know, it, it cemented us in their heads in some ways. So. Yeah, but, but it, it, it is sort of somehow, it ma does it make you proud? Or? Oh yeah, I think yeah. it's great. It's really, it's really good to have been part of of some kind of stream. Yes. And on the whole, the people that we may have influenced tend to produce, well, they're, they're not bland, you mm. know. Even REM, REM got very big, but they never got bland. Yes. In fact, arguably, what they're doing now is their most experimental stuff they've ever done. Yeah. They're sort of, you know, giving Warner's stomach ulcers by handing them these albums that don't have any singles on yes. and saying, here you are, Hello. you know, and there, I know, is. I know Peter, absolutely, Peter Buck delights yeah. in this, you know, yeah. and they're in this rare position, they've got the power to do that, they, they will keep their record deal, they'll still get, you know, 10, 15,000 people into a show, yeah. I think that's great, you know, yeah. fair play to them, they're, they're the most extreme example of that movement, but, but I, I guess we were, we were just the kind of, we were just a precursor of that era, or like I said, we were the, we were the kind of funnel, corridor between the 60s and the 80s. Yeah. And, um, when you go on tour now uh, with the Soft Boys, mm. are you going to also play a solo stuff of yours? Oh, no, Mix no, it no, within? I'm gonna, no, it's, it's, my career is now such such a long building yeah. but if I look out the top I can't see the pavement down below and you know people. I can't see I can't, can't see my see the ants. I can't even see the well I yeah I, I can't see my own ants that sounds yeah. kind of indecent but <laughs> but I uh, can't see your ants go oh, but um oh is that one of mine sleazy person. but um <laughs> this is sleazy guy who sees his own ants but um the ant seeing types no I uh, I think the soft boys were just going to try and play you know, the, this isn't a soft, even a soft boys retrospective, it's an underwater moonlight show. Yeah. So it's based on what we were playing in 1980. Yeah. And then maybe we'll slip a few later things in. But my career is now too long for me to be able to do in one, one and a half hour show a whole... To get it in. With yeah, the, yeah. I, I did a Robin Hitchcock retrospective tour in the States a couple of years ago and I still was down to playing one song off each album. I would need to have... Seven multiple nights. I mean, yeah, you know, Nine. it gets a bit, it yeah. gets a bit long-winded. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I, it'll be selective. So this is basically going to be around. This will be the. This will be the tour that we never did in America and Europe in '81. You know, we were scheduled to. We just kind of ran out of steam. Yeah. Flop dead on the beach. You know, <laughs> we got as far as we yeah. were going to go, and 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 that was it. So. You know, assuming we make it, and, I, and I'll believe it when it actually happens. I'm sitting on, on a lot of wood and I'm touching it all. You know, I, I'll, I'll believe it when we've done it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wir sehen uns gleich wieder mit Robin Hitchcock, uh, Underwater, in the aquarium. Now, I always thought aquarium was wrong English, saying I, we're sitting in an aquarium. Oh, yeah. I thought meant we were sitting in a... I was sitting in the in actual tank. Oh, tank. See, in German, aquarium is a tank. Well, I think it is in British as well. Yeah. I think, you know, a, I mean, a tank is also something on wheels with a gun. Yeah. And I think this, yeah. or it's a prison, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, what you know with an aquarium is you're going to get fish, you're not going to get zebras. Yeah, that's Or true. civil servants. No, it's got something to do with water. And it's got something to do with water, and we're near it, you know, whether... I mean, it would be hard to do, conduct an interview in a tank. Yeah. You'd have to have the you would fish have to masks have and really all the rest good of it. Written notes and then You'd have to have your cue have cards have written, yeah, and answers. breathing apparatus and walking. You know. But that would be good, wouldn't it? It could be done. Yeah. You'll find, you know, if you have to interview Sting or something, that'll probably be inside the tank. But with me, you just get to sit outside. It's, no, it's quicker. I don't think I cheaper. would want to sit in a tank with Sting, really. <sighs> it's no, your loss. The cameraman can have okay. a break. Und zurück, da sitzen wir immer noch in dem wunderschönen blauen Aquarium mit dem noch schöneren Robin Hitchcock. Do you understand ja. that? Ja, hoffentlich. Hoffentlich. Und heute habe ich <lacht> äh, der Nase äh, mit Gas. Ja. Is it der Nase? Yeah, but why a nose with gas? Well, that's how it is when you've got a cold. It feels like that. Oh, as if it's... Yeah, that's what I meant, oh, yeah. I don't mean I I've taken a gas cylinder and pumped my nose right, up, you know. Some sort of funny drug or Oh, something. I've come up with a gassy nose. <laughs> Good evening, Germany. Tonight, my gassy nose. UK cult figure Hitchcock tells all. It must have been in the late 70s it began to inflate. Stop it. Oh, boy. Stop it. <laughs> so, so, there my, we are. My, my next question. Yeah. Would you like to hear it? Yes, please, I'd like Charlotte. to talk that about um, your songwriting. And uh -huh. do you... <laughs> Do you think um, songs or art in general should, should help people escape from the outside world or should they sort of reflect the real world like Bob Dylan once said? Well, he managed to do both. I yeah. mean, I remember as a teenager escaping into Bob Dylan. <laughs> but I probably escaped from Bob Dylan's idea of the outside world and his, his sort of <sighs> despair at life probably yeah. helped drive me inwards. Yeah. You know? um, I think I, th I think a song can do anything it likes, but it should in some way be good for people's mental health. Yeah. The first function is to help the songwriter. So uh, what you're doing is an extension of, all art is an extension of dreaming, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. That's why I mistrust art that has a a dogma or a polemic or an agenda mm -hmm. and the whole concept that the Soviets had that art must be for a purpose that will Change enrich the, the mind of the, the proletariat and things yeah. like that is, is of just a form of dictatorship although you could argue that whether you all have to worship Lenin or you all have to worship Michael Jackson what's the difference yeah. you know capitalism and communism both produce their own monoliths their own totalitarian everybody in leathers you know yeah. like gap yeah. i'm just very against everybody doing anything and yeah. it's one of the reasons i never wanted to be a star yes that, that's I don't one want, thing why i don't like carnival you know, for example yeah that's sort of everybody the second it starts it's a party and everybody has to be happy everybody uh, yeah. is dressed up and <laughs> right. everybody's drunk sort of why why don't they why don't some people want to get get drunk in the middle of the year and get dressed up. That's well, then they all sober up. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's sort no. of awkward that everybody wants to party at that second carnival starts. Right, we're all having fun. Yeah. Or we're all going to go and see Hannibal or whatever yes. it is. Yeah, I, I mean, there's something very totalitarian about those sorts of things. So, I, I, I don't really like art, art that feels obliged to be for some sort of purpose. Uh, I, I, it, stuff just has to come out of you. The way 
the way the dreams work, you know, there's this thing called REM, again, to get back to them. Yes, rapid the eye, rapid movement. eye yeah. movement, that's when you dream. Right. That's when your eyes move, when right. your lids are shut. That's right. Yeah. Anyway, many years ago, young Michael Stipe was asleep under a tree in Athens, Georgia, when an apple fell on him. <laughs> and the rest is history. Yeah. Michael discovers gravity shock. <laughs> US cult figure. It must have been about the late 70s, I noticed, etc. So, um, you know, but you need this rapid eye movement, and, and I think that the whole creative part of the brain is that, that whether you're writing or singing or drawing or whatever, or, or just having a nice chat, yeah. it's that part of the brain that's stimulated. And, and also sleeping. If, if you don't, it's not enough to lie down flat like a, a basking manta ray for eight hours. You've actually got to go under and and go into your dreams. Yeah. And, and this in some way is good for your mental health. Yeah.